Hello everyone, and welcome back to Scotland. Uh, and yeah, today we're on the West Coast Mainline North route in Train Simulator. I figured, I've had an idea for a while to drive the Class 70 from BTUC up to BTUC Summit. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. But first... Yes, we'll have to let this... We're letting this uh, Class 390 go in front of us. If the frame rate will hold. Come on. Come on! This thing is horrendously inconsistent sometimes. Anyway, yeah, the class lag. The class 70 is a bit of a curious beast. Um, possibly one of the least British looking of all diesels in the UK. It's, uh, I know that these things that first appeared to I know they were built by General Electric, and I think they first appeared... Oh, it would have been about 11 years ago now, but... Uh, originally, Freightliner was the launch customer, but more recently, Collis Rail have got some Class 70s of their own. And this particular engine, 7816... Oh god, jeez, look at how low resolution... God, I can't even go 10 seconds without this damn thing lagging! There's no reason for it to happen as well, so... Yeah, I, d I just don't understand. But anyway, yeah, this particular Class 70, number 7816, actually made a cameo in one of Jeff Marshall's recent videos, where he was documenting Network Rail on their track works on Clayton Tunnel on the Bryson Main Line. And, yeah, I just put it down just for the heck of it with some of these some of Armstrong Powerhouse's J and A wagons. The Class 70, uh, the Collas livery I should add, uh, that's a reskin from DP Simulation. I should also add that the wagons that our Class 70 is hauling today, they are from the Freightliner Class 66 pack. Speaking of which, here's a 66. Except this is, uh, it uses the old Freightliner model that you can get on Steam, but uh, it does also use Oh, but this is actually a livery from Armstrong Powerhouse's Class 66 Enhancement Pack. Anyway, let's get back to our Class 70. Yes, the first time I've... it's bloody typical. The first time I've driven... First time I've driven this thing in ages and I get bombarded by constant and yet inconsistent lag. <sighs> let's see if we can go through this run without me totally losing my mind. Because if there's one thing that really does annoy me about Train Simulator is the lag. Yes, for, I've uh, gone with a shorter consist today since um, uh, since I didn't. I wanted to make sure it would be one that could get away, uh, like and on the move quicker than say like a 20 or 25 wagon train. So this time I've just got 10 wagons. Oh, that flange squeal, that sounds like part of the sound set that I've heard with the Class 395. You know, that old London to Faversham high-speed route. So you can sit, even in the cab you can certainly and quite clearly hear the roar of the prime mover. And although the speed limit has just gone up to 100 miles an hour, um, I'm pretty sure these engines or freight trains in the U... Yeah, look, up there. Maximum speed 75 miles an hour, so I will try to stick to that speed. Although, given this incline, I don't know if we'll be able to reach that speed. But before we do, we'll get a shot of these 325s that are coming along. Essentially, those things are the 325s are essentially just uh, class 319s with interiors kitted out for carrying parcels and they've got cabs that look like networkers like the 465 for example as for these 70s here um, yeah I remember I used to know quite a bit about them but I've actually I'm almost forgotten and, but one thing I do remember is that one of them which was number 70, uh, 70, oh, 70.012 this one we've got a 7006 by the way. 70012 was the one that fell from the crane at uh, Newport Docks in South Wales. And there were pictures of the engine on a on the back of a truck, or lorry as they call them in the UK, and uh, 
yeah, you can see you could see that the frame was quite badly bent, and the locomotive I think had to be sent sent back to General Electric in the USA before it even had a chance to turn a wheel in service. And actually, come to think of it, I don't really know what the current state of 70012 is. Yes, that's the thing that this section of the West Coast Main Line is very well known for, is the steep climb from Beetook to Beetook Summit. It's, you just you would have seen earlier, if you were looking in the bottom left corner of the HUD, that it was about 10 miles between Beetook and the Summit. And this is at, or Beetook Summit being the highest point on the Scottish section of the East Coast Main Line, with the Shap being the highest point on the English side of the, of the WCML. This, even, oh, there's, it looks like on the other side of that stream there, there's uh, a busy, well, not really busy in this game at least, but in real life it'll probably be a busy motorway, which I'd hazard a guess and say is the M6. But don't quote me on that, it's my knowledge, not, I know nothing about the British roads. Although I think the uh, ones like M1 and M6 are like the UK's equivalent of New Zealand's state highways. Something else I also just remembered about the Class 70 is that this thing has been in the game for quite a few years now, although I forget exactly how many, and it has never had, I don't think it's ever had like a sound pack made for it. So these sounds that you're hearing on her today, as well as the noise from the prime mover, they're still, they're all still the original sounds. To be making, this engine seems to be making pretty light work of uh, hauling, uh, hauling this train up the line, up the incline, which to me it looks like it's one in eighty. Let's see if these. Yeah, I don't think you'd be able to get away with making freight wagons for train simulator these days that would still have uh, sounds that are as lackluster as these. Like you can barely hear it. Mind you, this is, mind you, West Coast Main Line North is a rather old route, and from memory, it was actually made by I think it was uh, Keith Ross, who also did uh, Western Lines of Scotland, and later also did WCML over Shap, which was uh, Preston to Carlisle. WCML North, of course, being Carlisle to Glasgow. I remember, I remember years ago when I would drive the Class 70 on a regular basis, I would often have a lot of fun messing around with the horn. Thus. I hope you, I hope you can actually, come to think of it, I hope you can still hear me over the, the noise from this game. I realised that before I even, or that I forgot to lower the master volume before loading up the, or before going into the scenario editor and putting together what is essentially a free roam scenario. Because I usually do that because it's, to me, it's a bit of an easier, sometimes an easier alternative to just do it, you know, to trying to find a, uh, to trying to find a, um, a standard or career scenario that someone else has made. Especially since with a free roam scenario you get to put down whatever trains or whatever trains and locomotives that you like regardless of regardless of what of like any historical accuracy I just realized I didn't think there were any crossings on this section of the West Coast Main Line one thing I've just remembered though is that uh, that the distance between Lockerbie and uh, Carstairs the two, those two stations it's about 47 miles and that means that that's the longest distance between two stations anywhere in the United Kingdom. Which I think is quite bizarre, because normally you get, I think on average the stations are like five to, or like two to ten miles apart. Not 47. Of course I think Lockerbie is probably more well known for, or was probably well known for all the wrong reasons. If anyone remembers what happened to a to, a, uh, to a Pan Am 747, I think, was it 1988 or 1989? 
but either way, it was just awful what happened to the pla what happened to the people and that plane. But I dare say that obviously the aviation is now a lot safer these days. Right, got greens. I'm surprised. Well, that yeah, that class 390 that would probably be doing the ton. I don't think it was actually doing the ton when it speed past us back at Beetook, but it's probably w well past the summit by now, which is why we've already, which is why we've got these, uh, we've just got these green signals the whole way. Speaking of, well, up to the summit, I've just remembered that I've actually put down at least one other AI train that we'll, we, with any luck, we'll see moving, as well as that 390 and 325 that we saw earlier, but I will not spoil it, or I'll not spoil what that other train will be. Because I, I dare say some people might be pleasantly surprised. I should also add that these uh, real, te these realistic textures on these containers, uh, they did not come with, they do not come as standard. And I th it was a, uh, from memory, it was a texture patch. I think I got from DP Simulation, but I still can't remember exactly where I got it. I think I set that AP, uh, no, I set the uh, other train to head off about, well, from the summit about like 1550. So in that case, I'll slow down just so, in the hope that we can still get that train moving. I shouldn't really be surprised, but even so, we've still, regardless, we've made much quicker, much better progress than I was thinking. But then again, the Class 70, I dare say, is probably one of these sorts of engines that can waltz on up and down, or waltz on up this incline, or this sort of incline, uh, fairly easily. Especially when she's only got 10 wagons. And there's a sodding plane going over my house again. That always seems to happen when I record one of these videos. Just going back to what I was saying earlier about this really st this, uh, steep climb to Beatrix Summit. Reminds me of, um, well I was just, just remembered that both Shap and uh, Beatrix used to have engines stationed there for, uh, stationed on that section for banking duties where they would usually help uh, long and heavy freight and, or, or, and just definitely pass uh, yeah, definitely freight and passenger trains up the incline and in both, incidentally in both cases you're going or northbound trains are the ones going uphill and vice versa and the yeah, Betic would have had obviously bankers and I remember that um, one type of engine that used to be, that was used uh, as bankers up this incline were the ex Caledonian Railway 944 class which were uh, 462 Pacific tanks, and sadly they were all they I think they'd all been withdrawn by about 1954, and uh, none of them survived into preservation. As a matter of fact, only three engines from the Caledonian Railway uh, are preserved, which I think is is a crying shame to say the least. Especially when the Caledonian Railway had engines as as fascinating and unique is like the uh, oh the Cardines like the uh, those massive well those four, those inside cylinder 460s with those massive those disproportionately large boilers although at least um, at least the at least Caledonia Works has uh, resurrected a lot of those classes in train simulator and so obviously I've got a few videos up where I've driven a lot of those engines Right, after what doesn't really feel like too long, it's not even 15 minutes, uh, we're here, we're now arriving at Beatrix Summit. And yeah, here on the, I think it's called the downside, because in the UK it's down, the well, down line is the one going towards London. We've got the class, uh, class 86, which is of course an electric, another electric locomotive, Although most notably is probably the uh, annoying lag again, is the class 370 or APT or advanced passenger train. And sometimes I actually forget that this thing, I've even got this thing in train simulator because there's barely any scenarios available for it on the workshop. And um, 
like Steam Workshop, of course, and for the most part, I don't really know how to uh, drive this thing. Yeah, there's the other strange aspect of these APTs was the uh, the fact that they had these big power cars in the middle, which passengers couldn't walk through. So each half of the train was or needed to have like it was it was essentially two. In a way, it was kind of like two um, or two units cu cu coupled together to make one long bi-directional set. Because I think each side of the APT had. Uh, had like its own dining car and possibly guards compartment. I'm not sure. Yeah, so I've set it up so that we can so that we'll uh, bring the class 70 to a stop here, and that'll be it. Of course, in the northern side of this incline, or the northern side, like going down or descending from Beetook Summit while going north, is certainly nowhere near as severe of an incline as what we've just been seeing with one in initially mostly one in 80 but eventually got up to 100 one in 75 close to the summit even though I've got a green signal I'm still going to stop oh, hello what does that say RSC rail that'll obviously be referencing what dovetail games used to call themselves as for KMR Oh, that'll be, I just realised KMR. That's referring. That'll be referring to uh, Keith M. Ross, who, as I said earlier, was the guy who made the WCML North route all those years ago. So, if you can still hear me, and <laughs> yeah, this has been a short but still pretty enjoyable run from Beatick to Beatick Summit. And thank you very much for joining or for joining me on this run. And I hope you enjoyed looking at the uh, Freightliner Class 70 diesel locomotive. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Uh -huh.